Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright, and I am the Resourceful CEO. And today I'm here to talk to you about goal setting. And by goal setting, I mean smart goals, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, time-based. With As a business owner, in order for your company goals to be meaningful to you and to your personnel, they need to align with your goals and they also need to align with the goals of your personnel. So first, let's talk about your goals. So when I go into a company, in addition, you know, the first thing I do is I take a look at the financials and the um, and the cash flow situation and so on, because the numbers for me always tell a story. What can I say? And then and I and I begin talking to people because people are the ones who fill in the blanks on that story. Numbers tell a story, but the people round out that story. And but then within the first couple of weeks, I sit down with the owner and I talk about what the goals are. And it takes a moment because first we need to determine what the owner's goals are, right? If you don't know what your personal goals are, then it's very hard to tie your company's goals to your personal goals. And so it usually takes quite a bit of effort. It's not like I say, I mean, it's rare. What, what's, there's all this, these stats on goal setting and the number of people actually write down their goals. So typically when I go in, you as owners have not written down how or do not know specifically how much um, or what your goals are. So uh, we have to really flesh that out. Do you want to spend more time with your family? Do you want to build a business that's currently, you know, five times as large as it is as it, as it is now, or ten times as large? Um, and if and if so, why? Why do you want to build a business that large? Um, do you want to leave a legacy for your family? Do you want to pass the business on to a child or a employee? Do you want to be able to travel more often? Do you want to step away from the business in a few years, uh, either fully retire or be able to uh, pursue other ventures? Do you want to sell the business and have a big uh, payout so that you can go do these things? There's all of these kinds of questions. Do you want to have a boat and be able to, you know, buy this buy this nice boat and take a trip every, you know, take a one week trip every month? <laughs> Whatever it is that you want, I, I, your business really can help you accomplish it. And so the main thing is first getting out what it is you want. Then we go back to the business and look at what the goals for the business need to be in order to have you achieve your personal goals. See? So if you say that you want to um, you want to be able to work 30 hours a week and have a business that's manageable, that doesn't require a lot of your time, and want to take a month off uh, every you know, three months, and then you say, yes, I'm going to grow my business 200% every year. Well, the two are not going to align unless you're going to, um, unless you decide to bring in outside investors and perhaps another, you know, an actual, another CEO to run the company and you take, uh, you can still maintain majority ownership, but you have to take a back seat. Um, and a lot of other decisions. So again, that's what I mean by what is it that you want and making sure that it aligns with the company. So that's first. And number two is then taking those goals and aligning them, taking the business goals because no one else in the company, except for me, <laughs> or whoever has helped you with your business goals, I mean, with your personal goals, 
in the alignment between your business and your personal goals. So no one else in the company needs to know what your personal goals are, um, but they do need to know what the business goals are. And so if you're if the company's at 10 million, I'm just using your numbers. Some of you may say, "What? I'm only at 500,000." It doesn't matter. I'm just using 10 million as a nice number. So if we say you're at 10 million and your goal, we've decided that the goal is to increase revenue by uh, 20% and profitability by 25% over the, um, let's say the goal is to have a, a profit margin of, of um, 20%. Right now, let's say that it's at um, 15%. So our goal is to be at 20% for the next year. And again, I'd have to vet that, make sure that that's, that's achievable where, from where the company is and where, and also for the industry, um, because again, it's actionable, you know, and it's, it's achievable. <laughs> again, if you're at 3%, you're not going to get to 20% profitability in that first year without a whole bunch of cost cutting. And I'm not a cost cutting kind of person, I believe in, um, I believe in slashing the things that, that don't work, but I believe in supporting personnel and uplifting them and empowering them in order to be able to achieve not just significant changes in growth and profitability and cash flow the first year, but in ongoing years. You don't want to sacrifice, you don't want to slice everything and sacrifice your future by focusing only on the short term. You're not a publicly traded company, so you don't need to sacrifice the long term for the short term. <laughs> okay, so what we need to then do is push the information down to the department heads or the your executive management team in the areas that they're responsible for. Um, so if you have the overall company goals, then you take those company goals and translate what that means to each department. So for instance, if you're a distribution company, then you may have a warehouse, you may have, uh, you know, trucking or delivery, um, you may have accounting. Um, so let's just say that account for right now, let's just use three departments, accounting, trucking and delivery and warehouse operations. And so each one of them has different different goals, but they're all tied to the company goals. So you have to determine what, what's their contribution to the company goals and then clearly specify that. And it's, it's a discussion. You don't tell your people that these are the goals. You, t you say, these are the company goals that I came up with. Are you in agreement? This is your executive management team. It's supposed to be if you want them to have buy-in, you have to solicit their opinion. You cannot just tell people if you want buy-in. These are the goals. What do you think? This is where I. This is where, the, you know, the genesis of my thoughts. This is what I think we can achieve. Have some, you know, discussion. Typically, it won't change very much. But then, when it gets to their department, then it's okay. These are the company goals. You guys go away. Let's have some discussion, initial discussion, but then you go away, determine what your department goals are, and then we come back and discuss them because we need to make sure that not only do the department goals align with the company goals, but that the department goals also align with each other department goals, right? They need to be, you need all, all your different departments need to support one another. And um, so you, can't have a goal, have one department have a goal that ends up basically eating into the goal of another department. They need, you know, it needs to be a nice symbiotic supportive relationship in order to achieve the goals. And then from there, it goes into uh, the rest of the, you know, the rest of the people, it goes, it gets pushed down. Uh, but that's how you make sure that goal setting aligns throughout the company. Then number three is then taking the goals and pushing it down to everyone else. And the way that I typically do that, uh, again, for larger organizations, there may need to be another tier. And so it's at the departmental level, and then maybe it needs to go to an area level or something. Um, 
but let's assume that there's it's a the ten million dollar company and there's, there's three departments <laughs> for simplicity simplicity's sake and now there's uh like 10 people in each department well each person occupies a role and in some departments there's multiple roles like in a warehouse you'll have maybe three warehouse workers two t or five warehouse workers two uh, supervisors and a warehouse manager um i think i missed it so let's say there's there's seven warehouse workers, two supervisors, and one manager. That's 10 people, right? <laughs> and in accounting, there's uh, there's accounting and HR. There's HR personnel, there's bookkeepers, there's a, or a bookkeeper, an accountant, and um, you, you get my point. So it's taking the role and defining what that role is and how that role contributes to the achievement of the company's goals. So since the goals will change year to year, you don't want to be too specific, but how does a how how does the accountant help the company achieve its goals? So strategically and then you know what are some of the main tasks that they do? But we typically most job descriptions focus on the the task and what we really need to focus on is the the strategic things that they're going to do because it's the strategic that aligns with the company's goals and we do that for each role not for each person because there may be multiple people serving the same role we do it by role and then we get people to commit to that and then you know the, the last step with that would be um, quarterly or semi-annual performance reviews and uh, monthly checkups. When you do it this way, um, people feel invested. People feel vested in the in the company's, you know, in the, in the achievement of the company's goals because you're sharing the company's goals with the with your employees. You don't need to tell them that, hey, we made t $10 million and our goal is to make you know, $12 million and have a, um, you know, a $3 million, uh, um, a $2.5 million profit or something, which you would say instead was our, our goal is to have, or $2.4 million profit, our goal is to have a 20% um, profit margin. So you can speak in percentages, and this way you can communicate things to your employees without being concerned that they're going to share that information, share confidential information with others. When you do this, when you align your goals all the way from the top, top down, and you get people to participate in this, they embrace it. They get on board. They are ha so happy to be involved and, and be a part of the team. You, they have significantly higher productivity. They're able to solve problems. They are empowered. Um, they they're the ones who help ferret out waste and um, and come up with suggestions for to improve processes and you you change your um, and you're able to achieve your goals so much faster. I mean, I with my clients, I typically say, you know, these are these things are going to take a year, but in many of the cases, it only takes six months because of the focus again it's a lot of intensity especially when i'm on site doing this it's, it can be very intense but it's also extremely extremely rewarding for everyone involved this is how you do goal setting in an organization if you want it to uh, provide you with the long lasting um, benefits i'm tiffany c wright the resourceful ceo remember to like this video and subscribe.